I find this subject very exciting, which is why I'm standing here to talk to you in whispers. Um, I think when we talk about research capacity, we have to think research capacity for what? And some agencies and organizations are about uh, supporting research capacity for um, general academic science. Others are doing it to be able to, from a perspective of uh, maybe defense or, or philanthropy or, or to enhance local capacities. But I think it's important to think about who is giving the funding and, and development cooperation funding, which is what CEDA does, may be a little bit different from what CDC or some other organization might be doing. There's a bit of a history to be thought of, and I just want to say that um, we have had biomedical research for some years in, in Africa and other places, um, but especially in the tropic, tropical research institutes. They were set up, but they were not set up in order to uh, particularly train Africans. It was more for them to do tasks and to address questions that are of importance. The other thing that happened in Africa uh, uh, was the decisions of the World Bank about the fact that uh, African universities should not be supported at all. What, what more uh, research? But these things changed over the years and there has been a transition and, and, uh, in the late 90s and there are a lot of organizations that have come to try to uh, uh, support research capacity. So CEDA, the Swedish International Development Agency, uh, the approach is to build and strengthen local research capacity at key institutions for research, and it should be in and by local scientists. Thank you. Um, and there we take a broad approach uh, to the research capacity uh, to enable scholarship, maybe not in specifically health, but health is definitely part of it because you never know what kind of uh, uh, expertise you need uh, when epidemics or problems arise. So from the 90s, as said, the idea was to use our resources, which were not vast, to try to support a number of uh, countries uh, to, to at least have a, one university that's capable of doing excellent, uh, high quality education and research. And of course, a lot of people are uh, funders are interested in uh, supporting individual research, and this uh, and individual research excellence is very important. But in order to have a sustainable research capacity, there needs to be more than that, and a, a robust in institutional research uh, promoting structure is essential. You read this one. <laughs> so this is what we want to achieve, and I think it's important to know what you want to achieve. Uh, and we have tried as much as we can to put the needs of the institution in the focus, and some of you have heard it earlier, but I. I like to use the example of, of Uganda and Makerere because it's been a long process and it started from the 90s, late 90s. So we asked them, 
what their problem were, problems were because the university was in a very bad state at that time. And they talked about these issues uh, of which you can see there. And we tried to answer it specifically. So we started with uh, helping them have a plan for their uh, ICT infrastructure. And we worked with other funders who were already interested in giving them small bits of infrastructure. But we decided to work together after the master plan. This allowed the library to be formed, to be able to become more efficient. And then we started supporting individual PhD students in collaboration with uh, Swedish researchers. And most pe there was a lot of exchange in the so-called sandwich modality. We also provided finance for uh, research funds at the university. The other thing that was important was that the university wanted to do demographic surveillance. Uh, and we support them, supported them to start their own where they can have owned the data themselves. And there were courses and other things. So after 15 years, it's a long time, but there was, uh, we had managed to support a total of 325 people at PhD level and a few postdocs. There was also a reform at the university to make research more feasible. Looking forward, we are, from what will probably be the last phase, we are looking at uh, training uh, 300 plus people at different levels. But uh, looking at local PhD training as well as the sandwich training. And over the years, we want to move we have decided since 2010 to move more towards supporting local PhD training in collaboration with partners, Swedish partners it turns out to be, to, in order to increase the number of research graduates. And uh, these days we ask the university to come up with a concept note of a perspective of the kind of areas they want to have expertise in. And bearing in mind uh, the, the lens of the sustainability development goals, and to do this transparently also. So after that, we make a, a call for proposals, and, and, the, and the proposals must be things that have areas that have been chosen uh, by the institution's uh, concept note. So, we are, we're, uh, with this bilateral cooperation, we have had uh, one round in uh, the countries shown, and we're into a second round and hope to improve from what we have learned. CEDA also supports organizations uh, working on research for health and others uh, to provide capacity uh, or funding to individuals and organizations. I show this because uh, these organizations, we have, what we encourage them, we and others encourage them to have people from low and middle income countries also in their governance structure. And uh, this, is, this is being done. And many of these organizations can be useful for uh, many of you here if you uh, follow them. This includes uh, these others, some in Asia, and uh, in the also the agricultural and uh, insect uh, and marine science, all of which tangent um, health, 
as we have uh, discussed earlier. I think I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, that, that was an effort for you. I, I would like to ask, is there anyone who can comment on this? We don't want to, we, we want to spare your voice maybe with questions, but are there any thoughts, comments um, on this? I know there is a microphone somewhere. Where is it? There. And where is Shashtin with the microphone? Here you go. There's one gentleman there. Maybe one of the colleagues from Macareri themselves could answer, but I just wondered what ev evidence of impact in terms of things like increased uh, output or uh, research uh, deliverables might have resulted from this very interesting and, and impressive input that CEDA have made. So I don't know if one of the Ugandan colleagues is able to speak to that if uh, that's not appropriate. Can someone else hear about that? Yes, there you go. If you can handle him the microphone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Aderik Mimbe from Uganda. I work with Macquarie University World Health Project, and we collaborate um, <coughs> strongly with the School of Public Health, that's the College of Health Sciences, and the College of Vet Veterinary Medicine. I think um, the statistics over the years have shown that Macquarie has become one of the, <coughs> the, in terms of ranking, the highest um, university in Africa in terms of publications. I can see the university has really gone into tremendous um, structural reformation in terms of research. And um, of course, there's that transformation from having lecturers who actually have a PhD and who have experience with PhDs. Because initially, you'd have mainly senior lecturers who are at master's level, but now most of them are PhD and professors. So I think the impact has really been great. And Macquarie continues to collaborate with many of the institutions, both internally and internationally. Thank you. Any more reflections, ideas? Here we go, the gentleman here. Good. Uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to add my voice. I'm Fred Kitutu from Macquarie University as well, and I'll use a specific example in, in terms of uh, impact. Uh, the research that was done uh, collaboratively between Karinska and Macquarie has been uh, at uh, the front edge of, uh, of formulating policy in managing childhood febrile illnesses, right from the time when we, we it was proposed that all fevers should be treated as malaria, and uh, when they piloted a home-based uh, management of fevers, uh, Uganda, Uganda studies done in Uganda were uh, some of what was used as evidence to inform that. Then uh, that was changed to integrated community case management. Again, a lot of studies from by PhD students in the collaboration between Karinska, uh, where the evidence that uh, noted uh, a lot that whereas uh, some uh, some fevers were due to malaria, a good proportion was caused by uh, bacteria and pneumonias. And again, that was uh, a revision globally of policy, and that has continued. Uh, 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 I'm part of the study that is again looking at uh, other uh, providers of, of care to children, the private sector. So there's a lot of impact in uh, managing of childhood febrile illnesses from this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, we have another gentleman there. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Charles Masembe. I joined the, I'm a vet and I'm from Uganda. And I am Associate Professor, Molecular Epidemiology of Animal Diseases. Um, I started interacting with the CEDA in 2008. By then I was lecturer. Then we were collaborating with several members in this audience from SLU, and then uh, climbed through the ranks, through uh, senior lecturer up to Associate Professor, and continuing to work on uh, several diseases, mainly animal diseases, uh, pig diseases. I'm sure many of you enjoy bacon, I do. <laughs> no now, diseases there. And now, because of the interactions and linkages with the, with the CEDA and Scandinavian countries and support from CEDA, as uh, through Linnaeus Palma, Ufoshki, uh, and many other programs under the umbrella of, of CEDA, 
we have now continued to do other researches. As I talk now, I can proudly say I am uh, an intermediate fellow under the Wellcome Trust, which, as many of you know, is very competitive. Thank you very much. And thank you for whispering with us today. <laughs> thank you.